we are going to let f inverse be the inverse of f. Then we want to prove that the derivative of the inverse function is equal to 1 over f prime of the inverse function of x, where f prime is the derivative of the original function f. In order to do this, let's write the derivative of the inverse function in terms of the limit. So we know this is equal to the limit as dx approaches 0. If you've seen the more conventional version, we would write this as h, but I'm going to write it as dx. And then we have our function is f inverse. So you have f inverse of x plus dx minus f inverse of x over dx. And now I'm going to introduce a substitution. What I'm going to do is let this entire top be equal to some new variable dy. So I'm going to say let dy equal f inverse of x plus dx minus f inverse of x. And what we can do with this is we can put dy on the top, but we want to get rid of dx. So let's figure out what dx is in terms of dy. To start off, we want to isolate this f inverse of x plus dx term so that we can take the f function on both sides and remove that f inverse. So to start off, let's add f inverse of x to both sides. We have dy plus f inverse of x equals f inverse of x plus dx. And now from here, again, we can take f on both sides. So on the left side, we get f of dy plus f inverse of x. And then if we do the function of the inverse function, we'll just get the original argument back. So it'll be x plus dx over here. And then all we need to do is subtract x on both sides. So we get dx is equal to f of dy plus f inverse of x minus x. So now we can plug all of this information into our limit. But we have one more thing, which is if we want to write our limit entirely in terms of dy, we have to figure out what dy is approaching as dx approaches 0. So for this limit, we're assuming that the derivative exists. And if the derivative exists, that means it's not infinity. Because the bottom is going to 0, the only way that we can have the limit of something over something that approaches 0 and not get infinity is if we have 0 over 0. So the top has to be 0 as well. And because we defined our variable dy as just the top, we know that dy is going to have to go to 0 if this derivative exists. So we know dy goes to 0. And then on the top, we have dy. On the bottom, dx, we plug in here f of, I'll write f inverse of x first, plus dy, and then minus for x. Because f inverse is the inverse function of x, we can write x as f of f inverse of x, just like this. And in this case, we have dy on the top. But when we do derivatives, normally we want the differential to be on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this as the limit as dy approaches 0 of 1 over, and then first we write f of f inverse of x plus dy minus f of f inverse of x, and then divide this whole thing by dy so that we can see on the bottom this looks a lot more like a derivative. And now, if we have 1 over something, that function 1 over x is a continuous function at everywhere except 0. And we know that if we have the limit of a continuous function, that's the same as the continuous function of the limit, which means we can actually write this whole thing as 1 over and then put the limit on the bottom as dy approaches 0. So now let's look at this expression that we have here. We have the limit as dy approaches 0 of f of f inverse of x plus dy minus f of f inverse of x over dy. This is actually the definition of a derivative. We have the function of something plus dy minus the function of something over dy. So this is actually equal to 1 over f is the function we're taking the derivative of. So we're going to have 1 over f prime of something. And what is that something? f inverse of x. So in fact, Using the limit definition of the derivative and doing this little unorthodox substitution, we found that the derivative of the inverse function 
is equal to 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. So that is our answer.